Man, what the fuck going on, man? Y'all already know who it is. It's the culture guru. And if you don't know, you're about to find out. Man, y'all already know I was going to spend a block again, man. Come on, bro. So shit. I did a motherfucking poll survey, bro. Asked y'all who y'all wanted to see the life story about between Stupid Duke, CEO Jizzle, and B.E.O. Kenny. And man, it wasn't even close. Y'all want B.E.O. Kenny. So I'm going to give it to you, man. Let me start off by saying thank y'all, my subscribers and supporters. Just hit a thousand subscribers. Make sure you sign up for a membership. Join the membership. Sign up, subscribe. Subscribe, like, and share. Come in if you ain't already, man. I appreciate y'all. I couldn't do nothing without y'all. You feel me now? I'm going to go ahead and file this. Hey, uh, man, we're going to get straight to it. And uh, let me address this first as well, man. Uh, I had a, it's more love. I had a couple of trolls, like, trying to nitpick and shit. Like, man, if I try to hurry up and rush and get y'all the video and I might slip on some, man, you feel me? Forgive me, man. I'm on the hermit, man. All that lame shit, man, coming to her trolling, man. Just keep this shit over there, dog. You feel what I'm saying, man? It's all positive vibes. But let's get to it, man. And, hey, I'm going to also try to give you this shit to where, you feel me, everybody can understand it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try to cut out some of the goddamn, yeah, feel me, the schlingo. You did know what I'm saying? But without further ado, man, let's get into it, man. So, B.O. Kenny, born Kenny Gray, formerly known as C.O. Kenny, and currently known as B.O. Kenny, was born in the ghetto of South Memphis, Tennessee, in the Walker Homes Projects. Okay. But B.O. Kenny wasn't raised there. He wasn't raised there. Okay. After being born in Walker Homes Projects, B.O. Kenny and his family moved to King Gate Projects, which is located in White Haven, uh, which is uh, also where it was Pre- Graceland and it was Presley had lived at, y'all. Also, White Haven is where QC artist Duke Deuce is from. All right. Okay, so B.O. Kenny and his family moved to King Gate Projects in White Haven, better known as Black Haven. And um, King Gates is also the apartments where Big Thirty, you know, Chopper Gang artist, Pooh Shice, the partner, is from. You know, had to give an honorable mention. And also where Money Bad Yo, cousin and artist Big Homie G runs at. All right. So B.O. Kenny and his family moved to King Gates in Black Haven or White Haven. And B.O. and his family then moved from the King Gates to the Wind Branch. All right. And then returned back to Walker Homes. All right, and that's where when Kenny would jump off the porch and get molded. You dig what I'm saying? All right, so B.O. Kenny would then go on and experience a lot of hardships and challenges growing up in South Memphis. All right. At a young age, in an uncommon age, B.O. Lil Kenny and his older sister would have to walk Lil Kenny out of the dangerous projects a walk of homes across the street to a daycare due to Kenny family being poor and not really having a lot. During walking, during the times of walking Lil Kenny to daycare by his big sister, Lil Kenny and his sister will often have to see and experience drug transactions, prostitution, you know, violence and things of that nature. B.O. Kenny and his sister will have to walk this same route every day and an attempt to try to stay out of harm's way, they would instead take an alleyway as a shortcut. So B.O. Kenny would then experience or witness grave amounts of crime during these times, around 10, 11, 12 years old. All right. Okay. Kenny would experience drug crimes, gun violence since moving back to Walker Homes. Look, Kenny would then learn quickly in the projects how things operate as he went on, as he as he grew up. Kenny would start to experience police chasing people through the alley of his home where him and his mom lived. Start to see pr- prostitution going on within those alleys, drug use and violence going on in those alleys next to little Kenny's home. All right. Little Kenny was living in the home next door to what some may know as a trap house, but back then was known as a crack house. All right. Look, Kenny saw very fast and learned very fast 
due to him being located near that alleyway of how the streets go. Seeing robberies, people running from cops, drug sales and prostitution, as stated before. Look, Kenny would then see a house fire in this neighborhood due to a mom who was overdosed on drugs, nearly claiming the lives of her and her children. This took a toll on Lil' Kenny, and Lil' Kenny had knew at this point that shit was real and learned the extended impacts that drugs had. Although Lil' Kenny saw the harmful effects that drugs had, Lil' Kenny also saw the positive effects that drugs had, seeing as how it brought about possessions, prized possessions throughout the hood for people who dwelled in it. All right, let me hit this blunt, man. We get into this shit. Look, Kenny, like I said, saw very fast how things go in the hood. Okay? But the house being on fire wasn't the only thing Look, Kenny saw. Look, Kenny noticed the owner of his house, the landlord who would come and collect the rent, also be spotted next door at the crack house. And at the moment, a light went off in Look, Kenny's head. Kenny saw the entrepreneurial opportunities around him. And look, Kenny, life would never be the same again. Look, Kenny would then continue to jump out the porch and migrate towards a local street in the infamous, inf in the, in the infamous neighborhood on the infamous, infamous notorious street by the name of King Road. Where he get into a huge bloody neighborhood brawl with ch with childhood friends and locals in the neighborhood. Look, Kenny got into the fight with close friends by the name of Kentura, his cousin Scoot, and about 60 other individuals. And the fight was said to have lasted more than about 30 minutes of straight chaos. This will be a life defining moment of Look Kenny, as this will be. When Lil Kenny would catch his first charge. Lil Kenny was caught by his school principal walking through the alleyway. Headed home. Where the cops were then called and Lil Kenny was apprehended and arrested. Taken away. After the cops had been called. Lil Kenny had been taken away. A lot of people in the neighborhood grew instant respect for Lil Kenny. Lil Kenny was only 5'6", so... It was a lot that Lil Kenny had to do to prove his point and let people know he had hard and he wasn't going for none of the fuck shit. Lil Kenny would then go on to be released, but that would not stop Lil Kenny's street experiences at that point. No, nah, they would they would continue to go on. Lil Kenny went on to get old and continue to push his G in the street. Finding himself getting more loyal and closer to the guys off King Road. And one day, the five, six minutes, alongside with Stupid Duke, OG Boo Dirty, King Ass Star, Nuke Bizzle, Gooder G, Tebow, Puncho, Twan, Big BG, and Lil CC will go on and give life to the historic origin of the Memphis infamous Young mob military. Starting with just eight. Starting with just eight members. This mob will go on to cause destruction, mayhem, murder, and madness in the streets of Memphis. Causing for units like the Scorpion Unit, Scorpion Unit of the Memphis Police Department. Then Operation Blue Crush. None of these operations seem to phase Young Mob as Young Mob had begun to get more and more more ruthless and to the surprise more strategic in their crimes and what made young mob so deadly is that they were a mob controlled of top ranking members of other gangs being near the bloods the pyrus the crips the gds and the vice lords you see these members such as og boo dirty king and star nuke bilzer tebow Puncho, twan big bg gutter g Tebow King Gas Star Stupid Duke. These guys weren't just your ordinary street gangsters. These guys were already having rank and status in they regular street gangs. So when they came to form, when the first eight members came to form Young Mob, they already had rank. 
which I already had them ahead of any other mob and squads in the in 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 the city. Other mobs and squads such as Beast Mode, AGPs, and things of that nature. Okay, let's get to this shit, y'all. Look, Kenny would then find himself frequently in the studio, frequently in the studio with the other friends of the neighborhood. Look, Kenny never knew he had a desire. Never, look, Kenny never had a desire to rap. But every time he was in the studio, look, Kenny noticed he'd end up nodding his head, you know, bobbing his head to the beat. And lyrics just naturally, organically began to, began to come to his head. So it was clear to see that Look, Kenny had. A natural talent, to say the least, or to say the least. Lil' Kenny would then make his first appearance on the song of OG Boo Dirty, a Memphis artist and one of the founding eight members of the Yama military. The song was titled OG, and it was written by OG Boo Dirty. Okay. After the song was wrote, a video was then filmed to the uh filmed to the song. The song was making waves in the in the city of Memphis. His Gucci man was basically running the rap game alongside Lil Boosie. So the club scene was big. Gucci man went on to sign Waka Flocka, Who Kid, and a lot of other artists creating that turnt rap scene in Memphis. And this all influenced Young Mob. But hey, this part one. Make sure you click on part two. Like, subscribe, comment, share, and I'm gone.